Hello, uh, Dane Brooks. Uh, this presentation is for EDU 528, uh, week six. Uh, this assignment was the fiscal plan. Uh, for the Salisbury uh, fiscal plan, uh, the personal budget plan or budget model that I would choose, uh, I would personally like to use the combination budget model. Uh, I've always worked in a smaller school district, uh, you know, class one, class two, class three size. And I just feel that that model uh, caters really well to the districts uh, of that size. Uh, the combination budget model uh, generates general support uh, for the district's budget from tax revenues, uh, ticket sales and tuition sources. Uh, at our school, um, a majority of our uh, school revenue comes from state and local taxes. Um, we do not have tuition sources here. So that part obviously would be something that we wouldn't utilize here. Um, the funds are spread out throughout the district for a number of purposes, including athletics. Uh, here at Salisbury, the school that I'm at, uh, it's a very prosperous rural farming community. Uh, we have a lot of family farming outfits that are in a bunch of locally owned businesses, too, that are very supportive of our school. And I think that, along with the uh, community involvement, uh, would be a, would be a good asset to the uh, to the combination budget model that I think would work best. The current district budget model that we use at Salisbury uh, is the zero base budget model. Um, the zero base budget model doesn't focus on a year to year thing. Uh, it starts z at zero every year. Um, coaches, if they want anything, they have to they have to ask for it in order to get it. Uh, at Salisbury, we have an overall athletic budget that spans the entire athletic department. Um, no one program has a specific budget uh, for which they must work in. Uh, if a program has a want or a need, like I said, uh, the head coach or sponsor is reliable for filling out the paper, the proper requisition forms, uh, stating what they need, what is needed, uh, describing the item, how many items are needed, and the total cost and reasoning for requesting the item. Uh, that requisition is then passed through the chain of command where it is prioritized and approved or denied based upon importance, uh, immediate need, and any other criteria. The athletic activities purpose or objective uh, at Salisbury R4 Schools, the purpose of extracurricular activities uh, is to learn, grow, and excel athletically as well as academically. Um, we view our athletics as an extension of the classroom. Uh, where all participants are held to high behavior and character standards, as well as academic standards. Um, in an effort to achieve these goals, uh, Salisbury R4 School District has developed a prevention program that includes athletic code of conduct that all the participants are required to read or sign, read and sign prior to the start of each athletic season. Um, I think that the zero-based budget model, which I previously said that we use, uh, kind of represents or goes along with our athletic activities uh, purpose uh, and philosophy because, you know, it, like I said, it doesn't focus on previous years. Uh, everything is based on the here and the now and what our current wants and needs are uh, to give our student athletes the best opportunity to be successful both in the classroom and in the athletic world. Uh, funding for activities athletic programs here at Salisbury. Um, our most of our activities and programs are funded by a combination of gate uh, receipts uh, taken from all of our sporting events that we have. I think we have uh, roughly eight or nine varsity sports uh, teams, and uh, that's where a lot of our money comes from, or a lot of our budget. And uh, we also have a sponsorship with PepsiCo that we've been working with for the last five years. Uh, and they help cover or supply us with a lot of our athletic needs as well, such as our water bottles, water coolers, um, any other stuff kind of, uh, stuff that goes along with that area. Uh, determining the individual athletic budgets, as I mentioned about, uh, before, uh, no one, no one program has a specific budget for which they must work within. Uh, the overall athletic budget here at Salisbury is safe to cover costs such for such things as officials, uh, supplies and equipment, uh, entry fees for tournaments if that's necessary, and uh, certain technology needs uh, needed to operate the sport. Um, headsets for football, 
uh, a lot of our statistic software that we use uh, for all of our sports. Um, Huddle, which has become huge for basketball, baseball, softball, football, you name it. Uh, anything that allows for uh, video sharing with other schools. Um, determining team budgets uh, begins with a conversation with all the program coaches to determine what supplies and equipment is needed for their respective activities. Um, basically, all the coaches uh, fill out requisition forms, um, uh, ranking what they need in order of uh, importance. Uh, those lists are then combined to make one giant athletic budget list, uh, usually with the greater cost or the larger items uh, taking priority at the top of the list. Um, costs are obviously going to vary depending on the sport. So here at Salisbury, uh, uh, other sports are do do uh, receive a higher or a larger piece of the budget, uh, sort of say. Um, and if large purchases such as weight equipment, uh, protective gear, or possibly uniforms is required, the district may look for assistance from our district booster club, which in the past has. Uh, was the main provider of our uniforms, but that has changed. Uh, they do help out a lot with a lot of stuff we need. Uh, usually if we just ask, they will help out and give us, uh, they'll go in on it with us. Uh, fundraising and donation policy. Uh, at Salisbury Art Full School District, fundraising is, is only allowed through our varsity club, which is basically all of our varsity sports, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it's uh, They usually conduct one fundraiser at the beginning of the year in the fall. Um, they sell uh, every, every player for every sport is required to sell a certain amount of uh, discount cards. Um, that money is then divided up evenly throughout all the programs. Um, the one kind of downfall I, I see to that, or that I, I'm not a big fan of with that, is that you know football. We have we usually have football and softball. Our, our two popular sports have the most athletes and if they're all required to sell a certain amount of ticket or of, of tickets uh, we're obviously going to be bringing in a larger chunk of that uh, that fundraising money uh, as opposed to say golf who has five or six kids where football's got 30 yet all the money is being divided evenly throughout all the programs um, with that being said, individual athletic programs here at Salisbury are not allowed to fundraise in order to meet needs. Um, in terms of donations, in the past, there has been families or organizations that have donated to sport-specific items or specific sport programs. Uh, it's been a while since that happened, uh, but if a do donation is made, uh, it is, it is uh, accepted and handled through our athletic department and by our athletic director. Uh, to make sure that it's earmarked for that designated sport or that designated athletic item that it is intended for. Uh, sponsorships and advertising. Uh, here at Salisbury, we do sell sponsorships and advertising space uh, with all of our sports programs. Um, like I said, uh, a lot of our uh, local businesses uh, in the in area businesses will or have the opportunity to purchase uh, advertising space uh, either inside our athletic programs that are passed out at the gate of all of our sporting events, or uh, we do offer some larger uh, promotional space um, on our scoreboards at our athletic facilities and on the outfield fences of our baseball and softball facilities. Uh, pay to play policy. Uh, here at Salisbury, we do not have a pay-to-play system set uh, in place. Um, all of our students are welcome to try out and participate in any of our athletic programs provided without uh, paying a participation fee. Uh, the only cost uh, to the participant is that of any personal belongings, such as shoes, gloves, bats, uh, etc., for certain sports, softball, basketball, uh, football, anything else they would need. All other protective equipment and uniforms uh, costs are covered by the Salisbury School District. Uh, program expansion. Um, program expansion is initially handled through our athletic director 
in our athletic department. Uh, if an individual or group wishes to uh, expand the offerings of Salisbury High School, uh, they may, must first coordinate with our athletic director. Um, if there's a sport or an activity that they feel is beneficial or would be beneficial to our school district, uh, the person is asked to prepare a proposal for that sport or activity that they're, rec that they're requesting for consideration. Uh, that proposal is then passed along from our athletic director uh, to the high school principal to the district superintendent, and then finally on to the Board of Education for final approval. Uh, here at Salisbury, the budget checks uh, checks and balances. Uh, everything, starts in, everything starts and goes through our athletic director and our athletic department. Uh, any all, all athletic related needs are handled through our athletic director and building administration. Uh, all athletic purchases have to go through a three-step process before being ordered and paid for. Um, all orders must first be approved by our athletic director, then uh, the building principal, and finally the district superintendent.